Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the allotment. It's the 27th of June today. Um, I just stopped in to pick some uh, Logan berries and just have a quick check of the plot um, and it's quite quiet so I thought I would do an allotment update. Um, let's take you back up to the shed. I've been out uh, walking the dogs. Uh, they're helping to keep the grass down by the shed. Um, things are looking up. Um, in fact it's probably over a month since I last did a, an update and uh, we've had a lot of broad beans which are now over. It's that plot on the end corner there. I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute but I think pretty much now everything that uh, is supposed to be in the ground is in the ground. Um, I've still got a few things to sow but um, we'll start uh, here with this is second sowing of beetroot um, and a something like third sowing of lettuce but this is the only one that's actually germinated. I've had real problems getting lettuce to germinate directly sown this year. I don't know why. I'm not quite sure what's been going on um, but it seems to be doing well um, and the beetroot next to it it's doing well as well. Uh, this is the first sowing of beetroot which needs a really good weed as you can probably see. I um, haven't had anything off of this yet because uh, there's nothing there that's really big enough to eat. So um, hopefully in the next sort of week or so otherwise I think the second sowing will catch the first sowing up. Um, got a mixture of squash uh, courgettes um, and gherkins here. The gherkins are growing up the this uh, pea and bean net. Um, previous years I've just let them scramble across the ground. I thought this year I would give them something to hold on to. Some of them seem to have taken to it rather well. Others are just doing their own thing so they need just uh, pulling in and uh, helping find a climb. Um, you can probably see courgettes are flowering and just starting to produce fruit. Um, in fact there's one there that's probably going to be ready fairly soon. Um, another one there look. And then these are patipan squash, these two I think. Uh, they don't seem to have produced any fruit yet but uh, not doing too badly. Sweet corn's out. Um, again, had problems with germination with this um, back in the potting shed, but uh, I've got a reasonable problem. So I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and then put a framework around it like I did last year to protect from the badgers. Um, I can't tell, apologies if there's uh, wind noise on this because I only just uh, popped down, didn't bring a spoffle or anything to put on the on the microphone. Um, this is where the broad beans were, as I say, uh, they're all harvested now. We've got a freezer full um, and I've been eating them pretty much with every meal for about the last four weeks, um, if not longer. They've done really well, uh, so really pleased with those. Um, and then uh, onions that were next to them have come out. They came out of the weekend um, and shallots. These are the onions that I sowed a bit later. Um, and they're doing reasonably well. Uh, some fairly decent sized ones there. Better than the overwintering ones I have to say. So something to think about for for the future. Uh, runner beans just starting to produce flowers in the last week I think. Uh, no sign of any actual beans yet that I've uh, noticed anyway but uh, pleased with those they're doing quite well again they were a second sowing I think I showed in my last video the first sowing nothing happened I think they just rotted um, and these uh, germinated more or less straight away um, and you know they've gone out uh, they went out at the end of May so they're uh, doing quite well uh, for the first year this year I've actually got I think there are four pairs on here. This is a pair called, I think it's Burr Hardy. Um, so we've got one, two, um, and then two, one, two up there. So the first pairs on the pear tree 
Um, so I'm really quite excited with those. Hopefully they're going to uh, grow a bit and uh, ripen up. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's good to have them. Uh, this is the cucumber, pumpkin and butternut squash plants. Um, I think the two at this end are the pumpkins and then the four in the middle are butternut squash and then the sort of three or four on the end are the cucumbers. Again, I think, don't think rather that there's any fruit forming yet. Um, they seem to be taking a little bit longer this year than they have in previous years. Apple tree is going great guns. I've already uh, trimmed some apples off of this as you can probably see there's a few on the floor. Um, just to try and reduce the weight um, and stop any branches breaking or any crowding. I still think, for example, that one there can probably come out. It's not going to do any good. And that little baby one in there is never going to come to anything. Um, just basically give them room to grow. Um, this year I'm going to try and let them, because uh, I think I've said in previous seasons, it's a variety called Cobra which is a cross between a Cox and a Bramley. Um, the earlier you pick them, the closer they are to the Bramley. So if you pick them sort of uh, mid-September, they're a bit more of a cooking apple. If you leave them on the tree a bit longer to sort of uh, mid-end of October, they're much more of a Cox than an eating apple. So uh, that's my plan at least. Um, then soft fruit, as I say, I've come down to pick some Loganberries because as you can see, um, We've got loads at the moment. They're all all ripening up really nicely. Um, and then this year we've got um, good harvest of gooseberries. They're still going, um, and I think that's partly down to netting. This year I haven't netted for a couple of years, um, so. But as you can see, gooseberries and also um, black currants. Um, I don't know whether you can see the black currants in there or not. Um, where are we? Probably not. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Top of the middle of the frame. So there's a good selection of black currants as well. Um, I'll try and make some um, either black currant jam or black currant jelly with those. Um, and then last but not least, potatoes. These are due. I can harvest these any time really, um, they've had their sort of growing period um, but probably I'll wait until the weekend because I don't actually need any potatoes at the moment um, but I don't know that you can see, <laughs> got a uh, sunflower, one there, one in the middle there uh, and one over in the end of that row. I'm going to leave them try and see if I can uh, harvest the potatoes without disturbing them because I think certainly at least one of them if not two of them are um, growing in the middle of the um, of the earthed up row so that might be uh, interesting so I might stake them um, and then kind of harvest around them very carefully we'll see how we get on with that um, so although I can't enter them for Nick's allotment uh, sunflower challenge because I, he, I didn't actually plant them, they're self-sown probably from last year. Um, I have at least got uh, three sunflowers on the plot, which I don't, didn't plant any. Uh, I've got three here and there's one at home in the garden that's I think come off of the, the bird feeder. So yeah. And then finally, um, in here, no not finally, in here is uh, broccoli and cauliflower and some swede on the end of the swede. Uh, don't seem to be doing very well which is about par for the course for me I have real problems growing swede I'm not sure why um, but the broccoli um, and the cauliflower doing quite well no signs of any heads yet but uh, we shall see it needs a weed as well and what really needs a weed but I was waiting um, until the leeks which are in here so you can probably see there's one there Another one there, and you can, if you're very eagle eyed, you can probably pick out a few more. But, uh, oh, hello. You want to be on camera? 
there are loads of um, relatively tame robins about at the moment, particularly some um, youngsters. But um, so they come up quite close, particularly when you're working the ground. As Ruby can't see me now, she thinks I've wandered off. It's all right, Ru, I'm here. Um, so yeah, the uh, Ruby. Shh. It's all right. Good girl. Um, yeah, I put the leeks in, but they're a bit too small uh, to weed with any confidence that I wasn't actually pulling leeks out, but so uh, they're big enough now, so that's the job for this weekend is to get in there and weed weed the leeks. Um, so yeah, that's about it for now. I'm going to go and harvest some of those Logan berries and um, I'll tag a little bit on the end of this, uh, look at the tomatoes and other things in, in the potting shed when I get home again. If you've been watching so far, thank you, um, and stay tuned for a little bit more. So, welcome to the potting shed. Um, as you can see, a little bit different to last time we were here. The bench is now down and folded away, and the overwintering plants are back in the garden. And we've got um, tomatoes, aubergines on on the uh, end there and a little um, trough of radish the um, tomatoes are a, are a cordon type so it means I need to nip out the side shoots which I've been doing fairly regularly but obviously there's a few new ones there today um, uh, the there are sorry there are a variety called um, Romano which is a plum um, sort of regular sized plum tomato, not a like cherry plum, um, and they've been out now two weeks, I think, in the troughs, so they're doing quite well. Um, really been kind of thriving in the in the warm weather, um, and just starting to see um, some flowers now so uh, looking forward to to getting some of those not a variety I've grown before so not quite sure what to expect but um, yeah we'll we'll see how we go and uh, what happens the aubergines I'm not quite sure what variety they are um, I just got them from a neighbor who had some spare plants so I don't know whether she's grown um, like mini ones before little mini aubergines whether they're the same or whether they're sort of full size we'll wait and see and uh, hopefully we'll get some later in the year and then the trough of radish is just an experiment um, radishes on the allotment don't seem to do very well particularly if we have a lot of dry weather so um, what I'm trying to do is, is grow them in here where they get a, a watering every day um, and then just see whether they do any better um, and we get some decent radish. The watering system I use is the same one I've used before, it's just um, old two litre pop bottles um, with one of these watering spikes on so that's in the ground and then um, the pop bottle screws into the top, it's got a thread that fits and then you just fill the pop bottle and um, it discharges over the course of probably about two to five hours depending um, this one here which I have pretty sure filled this morning has already drained so um, they vary depends on how wet the soil is really leave that good girl she's found a bit of stone um, yeah so they work quite well. Um, I've been experimenting this year in that I'm just using the watering in the morning. I used to do it in the evenings, um, but uh, just seeing if doing it in the mornings makes any difference. Um, the aubergines don't, I think, guess because there's only two in the trough, need quite as much um, as the tomatoes where there's three plants to trough and they're obviously much bigger as well. So, Ruby, leave that. Come on, good girl. Just finally to show you, um, these are the overwintering onion sets. Um, and these are, as you can see, red onions, some of a reasonable size. 
um, some are a little bit smaller, and then shallots. So I'm just drying these out so that I can um, clean them up a bit and get them into into store. But it gets quite warm in here, so uh, that's the the plan at least. So, as I said earlier, if you have been, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. I might go and see what Ruby's doing with that stone.